Hey guys, welcome to Brawl Street to Britain, a UK Philly show, and it, it, it's good to be back. It's good to be back, and you know what? It was it wasn't till the first time when I got to Citizens Bank last week. It's like I miss the Phils. I miss the Phils. Yeah, it ended horribly, but I miss baseball. I miss the Phils. Uh, it is uh, UK Phillies here, Dave Shaw, and I'm joined by two great special guests, Richard Skinner, who's making his debut on the show, and of course, a friend of the show, NBC Spencer McCurcher. Uh Richard, how are you, my man? You've just come back from Philly yourself. How are you? Yeah, very good, thank you. Um, still kind of recovering my voice from uh, from Sunday at the link. Uh, it was my first time watching the Eagles, so... Um... Obviously, not, it looked like it was going to be comfortable and then not so much, which yeah. is, I mean, that's just like Philly sports, isn't it? So we got the real experience, <laughs> um, but it's still still recovering, but I'm good. And and Spencer, buddy, saw you just last week as well. How are you, mate? Good, man. How are you? Yeah, it was uh, always good to see you. Nice to meet Richard and always good to see you, man, from the uh, from the trip back in June. And glad we got to come here and show you around a little bit. It was a great time, man. I'm so glad and miss you already. It was uh, it was awesome. First of all, before I get started, I I need to uh, I need to thank you all for the uh, you guys listening and watching for the for the love uh, that you gave the, the video. Uh, it was sort of my way of like Philadelphia gets such negative rep, and I'm sick of people saying oh <laughs> just just saying bad on Philly, and and it's such a beautiful city, and it was the first time that I've managed to get out there when the Phillies aren't playing. And actually be a tourist again, because <laughs> usually when I'm over there, when the fields are playing, my week is action packed. I don't get to see much of the city anymore. I get to stay in different areas, but I'm so busy. So this was a great opportunity for me just to get everywhere, uh, go to some fantastic places. The uh, Philly captain giving me the big tour on, on the Tuesday was fantastic. Um, getting out to Fishtown, Northern Liberty, South Philly, staying in South Philly was a dream. Um, I, I love it down there. And I thought... I'm just going to do my best to, to capture the good side, the beautiful side of Philly um, and, and what it means to me and what it means to the people to be from Philly. And uh, I didn't know how it would go down. I was very, very nervous. Uh, a lot of work went into it. <laughs> hours, hours of work went into it. And the way it's gone down and, and the, the Philly official Philly Twitter retweeting it and, and the tourism board. And it, it's just, the response it's had from you guys, the love it's have has, has been incredible. So it means a hell of a lot. It's really appreciated. Thank you so much. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm blown away by it. Absolutely blown away by it. So thank you guys. Um, Richard, this is your first time on the pod. It and is. I look like what's do with people on the first time on the pod. How did you become a Phils fan? And how long have you been a Phils fan? What got you into the Phillies? Um, unfortunately, actually, not not too long. Um, so I've been an Eagles fan for for quite a while. Um, actually, visited Chicago uh, last year, and um, there was no other sports on at the time. Thought, oh, we'll just go to a baseball game, see what it's like. Um, first experience watching baseball was the White Sox. Uh, I think they lost oh. five one to the Astros, and kind of. And you came back after that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it was. Um, I mean, it took a year. So uh, it was like a brain delayed <laughs> game. It was like I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, then visited um, Philly for the first time this May. Uh, again, unfortunately, the Phillies were away. I can't remember who they were playing, um, but just it was on the TVs. Just around, the, we were sat in bars. It was on TVs and just kind of like drinking beer and like every so often, like and then noticed, oh, I'm watching like more and more of this and like feeling like how people were getting into it. Uh, and then sort of came home and was like, oh, let's start watching some games. And then, uh, as you all know, staying up till stupid times in the morning just to oh. just to watch some games. Yeah. Um, so since like, only really since like June, so I like missed the London series. Um, but yeah, I've kind of been all in and yeah, late nights watching the the very short playoff run. But um, that, it was still fun while it lasted, especially the uh, the Castellanos walk off hit. That was a that was a highlight. So so this is great because you're just on the beginning of your Phillies journey. So this is this is fantastic. So next season's you're going to be your full season, first yeah. full season following the Phillies. So Richard, we're going to keep bringing you back. We're going to keep bringing you back on the show because I, w I would love to see it from a fairly new fan's point of view and the opinions you have and to help you grow the game for you as well because it's quite a familiar story. Yours is, there's a lot because Eagles, Eagles, NFL, football's, you know, it's up there. Baseball's coming. But most people are Eagles fans first. Too. So to convert Eagles fans into Phillies fans is fantastic. That's what it's all about. Uh, and to help grow the game. 
and to teach you about the game. Uh, it will be fantastic as well as for many people watching this, listening this, who I know are fairly recent into the fills as well. So that's great. And if you've got any questions, Richard, ask and talk throughout the shows, ask away because uh, this is what this show is all about. It's an international feel. We're trying to get out there to new fans uh, who haven't been following the fills too long. Although I've got to say, Phil, um, Richard, when I was talking to you, I thought you'd been watching for years. I'm not gonna oh, lie. yeah. Like, I'm, like, all in. I'm all in. Like, yeah. When I'm into something, that's it. Like, I, I don't really do it in halves. So, absolutely. And by the way, this guy, Richard, you went a bit viral last week, Richard. <laughs> Some bad decisions. Let, 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 let's remind the people. There he is. You may recognize that video. That audio. Yes, that is Richard in the Jamie Drysdale jersey, <laughs> which brought so many people so much joy <laughs> that night on the set. So Spencer, you saw you saw the video, didn't you? It was the best, man. I, I told you when I saw you the next day, I was like, that was the coolest thing that I could have saw. And then, Rich, you telling the story about why you bought the jersey and all that, man. Which uh, has to be it, shared it, right now. Because exactly, exactly. Richard, it's, it's a great story. Tell the people behind, behind the... Maybe the only person other than Drysdale himself and his family and friends who has the jersey. How'd that come about? Um, so, like I say, like, I kind of don't... I was like, don't do things by halves. So I was like, going to a Flyers game, first Flyers game, like, I'm going to get a jersey. Um, and like, the black was my favorite, like, my favorite one. Um, so I was like, I'm going to get a black Mitchkov jersey. Going to the store, there's no Mitchkov jerseys. I don't really know any other players. Like, I knew Urson. Um, I'd seen him against Boston on the Tuesday night, had a good game, but they've been rotating keepers a lot. So I was like, oh, I don't know if this guy's worth getting and then was running out of time because the second period was just starting and there was a it was right in the middle it was drysdale number nine and obviously like coming from uk football um number nine's a good number i was like i'll just get this guy uh he must be good and then go back upstairs <laughs> to watch it and text some uh some of the people in the the philly sports international group who kind of know a bit more about the flyers uh is this guy any good and there was uh uh limited responses to that um <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, do you know what? Who cares? I am, I'm going to make make the most of it. It was two hundred dollars, so uh, either he's going to come good, and I can, you know, it'll be like the Trey Turner turnaround from me buying a jersey, or uh, <laughs> right, or it'll just be a funny story of how I uh, wasted all that money. <laughs> <laughs> either way, it's a win win. Exactly, yeah. Walking... You got to make the most of it. I remember I'll, you forever. I'll have that that jersey and remember like the train back and and, and the, just the trip as a whole. So. For me, that's the, worth it. The, the, the joy it brought everyone. You, like yeah. people were buzzing. Bad decisions. <laughs> like they were. They wanted more. They wanted more songs. <laughs> we're having to get creative. But I remember you walking back up to the to the box for the uh, second quarter. I'm like, Jamie Drysdale. <laughs> do, do you know who Jamie Drysdale is? But it was it was great. You know. I think I was, said, and I quote: "If he scores now, you've all got me to thank." And the first reply I got was, "You know, he's a defender." <laughs> 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 oh, it was it was fantastic. It, it just made me so happy. I I loved it, and the the trip on the whole was was fantastic for 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 you guys out there because you're out there with the British Eagles um, tour, British and Irish Eagles. Sorry. Um, so there was there was 25 of you, wasn't there? I think there was 25. Yeah, of you some, somewhere there. around that. Yeah, 20 20 something. Absolutely insane. It was a pleasure to join you guys uh, at times for it as well. Um, yeah, if you get if you get 20 25 British people. <laughs> on a train, merry after a few beers. Those chants were those songs are pretty pretty inevitable. But it was it was, it was so much fun. That was my first Flyers experience as well. The first Sixers experience. I think I enjoyed the Flyers more, uh, not only because they won, which and I, I think it's like one of their only victories this year as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we witnessed something <laughs> pretty rare and special there. Um, but it was I found hockey really fun. I really really enjoyed the hockey experience. Uh, it was it was just fun. It was really good fun. I, I can imagine. When the Flyers were good and all playoff hockey there, because I can imagine that place is rocking because it got quite loud. It was half full for that game, but it, it got quite loud. And you could imagine it a sea of orange when they get to the playoffs. I would I would like to come back if they if they made the playoffs and experience that because that was awesome. The, the Sixers was I, it was just a bad game. That was just yeah. dreadful. Oh, horrible. Horrible. Not even my good luck could, could change that. But the weather was outstanding. Like what? 80s high Crazy. 70s and then coming back to this <laughs> mid 40s is it's, it's, it's cold it's cold it's winter it's proper winter 
Uh, Spencer, you gave me a fantastic tour of the NBC studios, which I really appreciate, buddy. That was awesome. That was an awesome experience. Um, and you had a chance to talk some Phil's uh, for the Phillies Talk Pod, which is dropping, I presume, soon. Soon, soon. Oh, hopefully, yeah. Uh, yeah, hopefully next week. Yeah. And it, it, you know, talk about the Phillies. That's the first time I got to talk about the Phillies. And it's like, oh, there's a lot, there's a lot on my chest that yeah. I didn't realize there was that I want to get off. Um, let's, let's get into it. Free agency, Estevez, Hoffman, Turnbull, gone. One of them come back? Two? None? How many do you reckon? I think one. I think we'll probably get one. Um, it's going to be tough, I, I think. And now we heard that Jeff Hoffman maybe has, you know, a chance to look in the starter, you know. Yeah. There's a chance that some of these teams might convert him into a starting or a starting pitcher. We'll see. But uh, I think they're going to push all their their cards and their their money into Jeff Hoffman. Um, the Carlos Estevez uh, experiment didn't really work out as well as I think they planned. Um, Dave Dombrowski, his last few trade deadlines have not been great. Um, and it's turned out to, you know, either no one's played or they've been heard and Estev has kind of struggled down the stretch. And as you and I talked about in the pod, you know, too much hard contact. And when he was coming in to face Lindor, it was kind of like you just knew yeah. something was going to happen in, in game four there um, of the NLDS. But I think they're going to push all their cards into, into Jeff Hoffman. Um, he was fantastic all year. Um, one of the most consistent. He was an all-star, first time all-star. Yep. Um, and his story is just incredible um, from, you know, being DFA'd and released and kind of tossed around the major leagues and finally finding a home here and goes back to Bryce Harper talking to him in spring training, being like, this guy's actually pretty good. We should probably bring him up to the pen. And that's exactly what happened. And now he's going to get paid. He's going to get paid a good amount of money. And I think that the Phillies are going to be probably the ones that will be the favorite to bring him back. But as for Turnbull, obviously, the, the, the fifth start in the rotation uh, is interesting. Yeah. Uh, I wish that worked out. I think it could have if he didn't get the shoulder injury. But uh, yeah, we'll see, man. It's going to be the hot stove is here and nothing. I, I, it's one of my favorite times of the year. It stinks that the season's over, but the hot stove is always uh, a good time. And now you got the GM meetings and you're hearing Dave Dombrowski talk about their plans. And then you have John Middleton interview with Matt Gelb talking about that they don't really care about money right now. They're going to give go all in, whether it's for Soto or for anybody. So I found that interesting, mate, because. Dombrowski's comments at the end of the um, straight after the end of the season was, was but it was a little bit eh, a bit coy, you know. They're a little bit, yeah. We 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 may go and we may not. Very maybe maybe not, you know. But now already, what two weeks later, the attitudes have completely changed. It's like, yep. yeah, we're in, we're in, and the luxury tax is just <laughs> it's just no point, is there? The fills are, are are completely going for it. Um, Soto's agent says he wants to go a team that's ready to spend, ready to win. In, in your heart, both, I'll ask you both, Spencer, I'll ask you first. Do you, what do you reckon? Do you reckon it's a pipe dream? Do you reckon we've got a good chance? Do you, can you see it happening? What, what do you reckon, Spence? I, I can see it happening in my dreams. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the only thing. I would love it, man. And that's the thing. There, there, there's a rumor that came out today that um, Trey Turner, Juan Soto, or excuse me, Trey Turner, Bryce Harper, Kyle Schwarber, they're the ones that are going to be all in on these meetings with Juan Soto. And, um, I don't know if we're going to see the way that we have over the last few seasons of um, these guys signing in late February, early March. I don't think this, I don't think that's going to be the case. I won't be surprising if we see Juan Soto have a, a team by Christmas time. Um, oh, really? That, I think so. I, th I think so. I think I think everyone knows the market. Um, obviously, Boris has already reached out. Scott Boris's agent, who's one of the more, most famous agents in all professional sports. Mm -hmm. He's already reached out to some of these teams, you know, and trying to figure raise. some stuff out and, and that but <laughs> i think i think the money's already you know everyone knows what the money's going to be it's going to be in between 600 700 000. we saw shohei otani get that money yep uh, but that was obviously deferred i don't think any of this is going to be deferred oh uh, you know i was just going to bring that question up with, with the with the dodgers getting clever last year with shohei otani do you right. see other teams getting a bit smart with that the mets because the met the cohen's already they've they've already put their stall out you know we know what the mets are going to offer they've gone bullish on this I don't think the Yankees are going to match anything what even us and the Mets are going to do. I, I do think it's going to be a, a two-horse race between us and the Mets. I think he'll want to stay on the East Coast. Uh, but you, you think it will just be straight-up money? I think so. That's everything that I've heard. It's going to be straight-up money, um, which is crazy, right? That's yeah. When Bryce, when Bryce signed in 2019, you know, it was 13 years for $330 million. And it was like, that's a lot of money. Two weeks later, Mike Trout got 420 um now we're talking 600 700 million dollars for a 26 year old superstar so 
it's gonna be fun man yeah i i hope i hope it's between the phillies and the mets there's a chance that it you know there could be a sleeper team out there but it, it just comes down to ownership and willing to spend that money and go over that that tax that tax threshold that's the tweet isn't it the sleeper team comes in Always. out of nowhere it's usually Always. nobody um but i just can't see anyone else who's I, I don't see him going west on the east coast boston don't really they're in no position really to no. be getting big the orioles do need an outfielder but uh, i don't know they, they don't have that money even with no say, ownership there's nobody no i know the rays have shown their interest but i don't know what yeah, the rays the rays came out instead but i think uh the Rays called him, and I think Scott Boris immediately hung up. <laughs> yeah, hung up for him. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Richard, what what do you reckon, buddy? What do you reckon? We'd all love to see him here. Can you, can you see it? Um, yeah, what I think obviously we'd person? all we'd all love to see it. Um, I think it's just going to come down to where he wants to play. Like you said, the money's going to going to be there from one of the teams. Um, I don't think that's going to be an issue. It's just where does he want it? Does he want to stay in New York or does he want to come to Philadelphia? And like, obviously, he's got the teammates there. Does he want to come down to? You know this fan base. Um, it's a great one, but some players, you know, might not necessarily want to be in that that environment. Um, I think obviously, if he doesn't go to the to the Phillies, I'd prefer him to stay with the Yankees. I'd, um, I don't want to see him as a division a division opponent. That's a good point. Um, yeah, I think the money's there. It's it's all down to like, where's he going to be? Where, where does he want to be? I don't think there's much convincing we can necessarily do. Um, yeah, all the teams have got the money. Would I'd love to see it. Um, I'm not holding out too much hope. Um, I'm not. I, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. Get I don't want to get. I like. I, I'd love it. I just don't want to get too excited and get my hopes up. Yeah. Right, Spencer. I know you've got to quickly jump. We'll, you can jump. Jump back on, buddy. I'll jump back on. Yeah, I'll jump back on in about five minutes. But yeah, you're give good. Me one second. You're good. Right, guys. One second. You're good. I Juan Soto is someone who I reckon would thrive at Citizen yeah. Bank Park for starters. I think he'd be absolutely incredible. Um, I also think that if a team like us, uh, you know, and this is where I'm a bit worried because Mets are going to do the same, and I think it's that's why I think it's going to be us too. We're going to show, we're already, both of us are showing immense interest in one. Like, we yeah. really, really want him. We're putting our A game in there. You know, we're putting all our stars yeah. in there. We're, we're, we're flexing the money. They're doing the same. I, I think we're the two teams who are really going to show Juan yeah. that... I mean, I, I don't know how many you like... Yet big contracts they've got because obviously we've got price and trey on very very big contracts um trey's obviously not very far into his at all um no <laughs> so i don't know how much they already have committed and then we've got obviously schwaber runs out soon as well i believe um yeah this this year is not too bad next year's not too bad it's a year after yeah. well it's after next year is where the fields are gonna have to make some interesting choices yeah. and, and but you'd hope then by then we'd have some of the miners ready to come in uh yeah i mean like miller looks uh, yeah but it it's it's going to be interesting. There, there's relievers on the market as well, which would make great great uh, trade de um, candidates. Yeah. Devin Williams, Ryan Helsley, uh, Ryan Presley, uh, Kyle Finnegan's also on there. David Bedner, any of those names? Well, I'd, I'd love, I'd, you know, I'd have all of them. But any of those in particular that you're looking at, going, oh yeah, I'd love them at the Phils. Um. To be honest, not too many I recognise. Um, I think it's fairly oh, that's new. Fair um, enough. So, well, that's fair enough. I, um, I mean, my, my opinion on the on the three, like the ones we've already got. Um, yeah, I'd love half coming back as well. Um, yeah, I think oh, people yeah. like yeah. focus on you know. All right, he had a terrible postseason, but so did pretty much all the bullpen. And you look at other teams, and they had terrible. You look at like Class A was you know gone from. From well, class A to like Tigers series, he, he fell apart, yeah. he completely melted. Yeah, well, he went from class A to like double A pretty much. Like, he just wasn't <laughs> <Did we? like. laughs> and that, 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 in fact, to be honest with you, all the bullpens weren't that strong. Yeah, and I don't know whether it's a mental thing or the long season took its toll. Um, you, you know, one of the, the best things about being in Philly was, you know, it would have been great if we were there, but watching the Yankees blow it was yeah yeah, yeah it was yeah. a little bit satisfying you know the bar we were in uh i was in the kyber pass bar in old town and oh nice yeah i love it there it's uh, i love it loved it yeah, there by the so way good. shout out to the kyber kyber pass bar old town the best chicken wings i've ever had in my life and i went back there twice nice the chicken wings were unbelievable I think that was the very very first bar i went to in in philly when i got there in may Got off the the plane and went or well, checked into the hotel and then went straight to that pub 
it's it's a great, great. It's, it's, a, it's a real dive bar experience actually it reminds me of some local bar pubs near me it had more of actually a british pub feel than yeah yeah uh and actually by the way slightly uh diversion away from the phillies but halloween in philly was was something else as well mm. i i, I, got, I got yeah it. they love like, it there it's so weird <laughs> it was like like halloween night was like new year's eve on steroids yeah it was it was on it was like out of a movie like yeah obviously being being british we don't really do halloween yeah like we we kind of we we half ass it like, yeah we're like eh, trick or treat mm. <laughs> <laughs> dressing up mm. um but the way that like because we had the flies game on halloween and we came back into the city and it was just something out of a, a film a horror yeah, film. Yeah. <laughs> every every the bars were packed you know we couldn't even get into mcgillan's it was the queue was i don't ridiculous. remember where we went to be honest we went to well we went to brew uh and then yeah actually it gets hazy after that yeah i'm like i don't um, know <laughs> must have been a good time <laughs> and then went into some bars around the sampan area uh i remember because i can remember seeing elvis and sampan but it was it was so fun yeah. like i got it the atmosphere was amazing like everybody dressed up and they go all out it's not yeah, like yeah. some of the outfits you see here is a 10 man dressed in tin foil you know this is proper all out stuff and it was oh, it was so much fun so much so much fun um anyway we we digress <laughs> that might happen that may happen quite a lot um something else i found quite interesting which the phillies tailgate twitter account tweeted um is that a lot a few phillies players uh, are out of options this year um which if unless they uh, clear waivers would uh, would not have an option to go down which include uh, edmundo souza uh, Jose Ruiz, Tyler Phillips, Rafael Marchand, Cody Clemens, uh, and Buddy Kennedy, but I don't think that's going to affect us too much. Uh, Clemens is an interesting one. Once they call Clemens up, he's up. And he's either, yeah, he's either. But I, I have confidence in Cody Clemens. I think once he's up, he will be a regular uh, bench piece. Um, but it's an interesting one. Souza as well. And I, I wonder whether Souza could be a guy that they, they maybe look to move on from. What, what do you reckon? Yeah, I think we. I mean, to be honest, my, my, as good as the as like the regular season was, certainly at the start last year, there's not many players you would say are like locked in. They aren't going anywhere. Like obviously, Bryce isn't going anywhere. Trey with that contract isn't going anywhere. I'm, I, I think he'll come good anyway. Um, but oh, outside yeah. of that, you know, you look at the whole lineup and and there's not many players you would say no. There's absolutely nothing we'd we'd let him go for. You know, I think if the offer's there. Obviously, you don't want to break it up too much. So, yeah, if, if the offer came in for for Sosa, then yeah, and and don't be wrong, I like Sosa. You know, he's, I I think he's he's come through in big moments. Yeah, uh, plays with plays with passion, plays his heart on his sleeve. Uh, but I just wonder, you know, Sosa may look to move on as well. May want to crack at being a regular first team player again. Yeah. Like you know, because he, he'd be good enough certainly for a few teams to play every day. Um, but I wonder if the Phils could see an upgrade there on the bench uh, and with Sosa having no options. Uh, Rafael Marchand is a very interesting one uh, to have a play with no options. Now, one of my biggest desires in the offseason uh, would be a new cat, a backup catcher. Uh, yeah. And that is, you know, love, love Stubbsy. Love, love Stubbsy. Uh, but JT's workload, I think, is going to come down next year quite a lot. Yeah. Quite, and he, he he needs to. He can't play every day. It's affecting his production. Yeah. With the sure. bat and behind the plate. And again, love JT. Um, but I would rather JT played less games and was more productive in the games he played. Yeah. Um, because he's he's getting on. He's getting tired. His knees are getting affected. He's had operations. It's. I think it's just starting to catch up with him. Stubbsy, I love him. Nearly hit for the cycle against the Royals. Amazing. <laughs> you know what a game that was. But. You know, and if we can keep Stubbsy on somewhere on the team, that would be great in, in whatever capacity. Um, but Marshawn, if he can't stay healthy, which he struggles to, good catch is so much potential with Raphael Marshawn. It's just his health. Yeah. Staying, staying healthy is his biggest problem. We need a backup catcher. And I, I wonder if the Phils will be looking in that direction this, this next season. Yeah. Um, yeah, like you say, JT is not getting any younger. Um, yeah, uh, Stubbs is great, but uh, like personality wise, but is he someone you want? You know, if you're looking to take the uh, the workload off, JT is is Stubbs someone you want? If you've got World Series aspirations, being that second guy, um, 
Yeah, yeah. because if that workload comes down, you you need you need some production in the backup catcher. Um, and of course, Marshawn with no options once he's up as well. He's up. Yeah. He, he can't go back down unless he he gets injured. So it's, I think it's a bit of a, a an area that the Phils will need to look at certainly in this off season. And I think they will. I think they will pull the yeah. trigger. Perhaps. I think production like print from pretty much the whole bottom half of the order really is is been an issue. Um, you know, you look at like centre field. What do you do there? Like Rojas is, you know, he's a great fielder, but like his batting is yeah, you know. Worrying at best. Yeah. Um, it's the same as Stott. You know, so yeah. Stott, defensively fantastic with the bat, just really, really struggled. Marsh, very inconsistent. Hayes, very inconsistent. Never got going. The, the bottom of the order was was a struggle. Bohm struggled yeah. massively in the last part of the season. We, yeah, we didn't get the production. Rojas had a better second half of the season to his first half, but still... You just want a little, yeah. a little bit more. You know, if he can hit for 250, 260 and get on base with his speed, that'd be great. Yeah, because for me, it never, know. it never, the bottom of the order, it never felt like, right, these guys can do it. It's right, can they just get on base and can we get, you know, Schwalber back up? Can we get Turner back up? Can we get Price back up? And that's it. I, I, and I agree, and especially in the in the postseason, that Mets series, it just felt like, right, our best chance is, is Turner, Harper, Casti. Yeah, that, that, yeah, well, that was it. That's we it. can get, yeah. Which which is which is crazy because you know first half of the season that lineup was doing what you really hoped it would do yeah. like production all the way through and it, it oh, I'm gonna get annoyed again <laughs> it, just, it just dried up it just dried up unfortunately um, and I've, I, I again I, I do wonder they're gonna move on from Marsh are they gonna break the the the, the, the as it were the daycare kids yeah. up I think they are I think with with the window being now and the window probably getting a little bit closer a little bit smaller i think they've got to make I think they're going to be bold they've got to go yeah. for moves and i i think i think dombrowski and middleton are going to be bullish this off yeah. season because the braves aren't going to have a bad year and a down year like they had the season just gone uh they're going to have injuries i know it's an acuna's like to start this next season so is um so is strider but the braves are going to be i never you can never count the braves down no, you know they, no. it, it, they're going to be back there yeah, and you look on the Mets finished all right. They they, they lost, yeah. but they, they were hot, they were really hot, and they they had Soto as well. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's not can't happen. I, 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 the Mets are on a bit of a knife edge on what way they go for me. Uh, yeah. will, if will Alonso stay on or will Alonso go? He's now a free agent. I yeah. think I was reading today that he, um, I can't remember who said it, but they were they were pretty pretty hopeful of him coming back. And I, I think the money he does. wasn't I so think... much of an issue. I said I was saying that last week to people. I I think Alonso feels at home at the in New York yeah. and at his stage of his career. I I think he would. I, I think he would like one more stab at well. Probably, I I can see him finishing off his career there. To be honest, I would not be surprised at all. Unfortunately for us, if if Pete Alonso stayed there, but they they've got to add a bit. They got there by a pure momentum second half of the season, yeah. but to withstand it, withstand it through all 162 games. They're gonna have they're gonna have to add if they want yeah. to compete. So from them blowing it up, you know, start of the season, Cohen was talking about blowing it up and then starting again for the next year and the year after that. He said it would be like two, three years before they really get back into it. And then they've had this well, it was an incredible run they had last season. So I I don't they're on the knife edge of what they do. Do they do they now go back all in or do they still keep the original plan and sort of build it up gradually? I I'm interested to see what what they do. Uh, the Nats, the Nats will have a handy young team next year. The Marlins will, I don't, I don't yeah. <laughs> the Marlins are going to get left behind, I think. Yeah. Um, just, uh, just some quick ones. Is there anyone out there, Richard, that, that you would like to see, you know, that hasn't really been discussed? Is there any players that you know of that you, you know, maybe a curveball? It, it can be fantasy. <laughs> it, it can be, it can be perhaps a, a dark horse or anyone out there you would like to see come to the fields. Um, so anyone who can sort of play over towards the left, whether that's at third base or left field, um, I think those two, the third base struggles at the end of the year were, were pretty painful. Like I love Weston Wilson, but time and time yeah, that, again, yeah. he showed he's can not we, a third base. Cut that like, out now with the third base experiment. Yeah, experiment of Weston Wilson. Um, so yeah, I think yeah, sort of center field, left field, third base, just anyone, uh, anyone who can do a job. Um, uh, there was I was reading there's um the picture from. Is it a Korean league or one of the Japanese leagues? He's still quite I can't young. Think of his name, but yeah, I know who you so mean. So like Sasaki, is it? That does I ring think a bell. I might have written it down. 
because because last year the Phils were saying they want to get into the sort of Japanese Korean market. Yeah. You know, and have a beat on what's going on over there and try and be the first to discover these players like Mets getting Senga, obviously where Tani when he came over. Um find his name. He's I I'll I'll pan for you. I'll pan for you. <laughs> <laughs> while you're looking, while you're looking, uh, Jack Fritz tweeted something interesting, which uh, right. I would love. Saki. That was him. As, what was he's it? having a great season, but he's still. Uh, there's something about whether he can actually leave Japan yet because he's quite young, and the, yeah, the team would have to agree to it. And yeah, there was, there's, uh, but I know it as we said, it's a market that the Phils are definitely interested yeah. in getting involved in. Uh, Jack Fritz uh, said he can fill a trade for Ronaldo and a, and signing of Valanda. Now I. I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, Nolan Arenado. I would, I would love it, uh, but at the price of Alec Bohm, oh, I am yeah. so divided and, and contradicted on this one. Um, I, I, I could see the Phils moving on from Bohm. I really could. I'd, I'd be gutted. Absolutely. Yeah, I hope he stays. I hope um, he stays. I think we, we, we give him another chance because he's not going to have any trade value right now. Um, Get him stay, get him, get his hand sorted out because we don't know how much that was affecting him at the end of last year. And I think it was. Yeah, obviously mentally something, you know, whether he needs a sports psychologist or something. There was clearly something not right as well. He really, um, that's a good point. And I think he did, because that was, that was for me, one of the saddest things is that meant it, it, his struggles were playing out in front of everyone, not only physically with his hand, with his form, Yeah, so yeah, he's got physical and mental limitations like at the end of the season and Obviously, with you know, he wasn't the only one not performing, but uh, I think when we've seen, you know, you see that level of performance that he can get to. Yeah. Um, you know, you, if you got you know someone like um, you know lower down the order like Rojas or Stubbs comes in or something, you know, like good players, but not you, they don't have that ceiling that Bohm has. So I think the frustrations were more on 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 him. And, and the, yeah, yeah, and it, it, just seeing how that played out with him smashing his bat all the time, smashing his helmet, you could see mentally how much it was affecting yeah. him. It's not nice to see, you know, because he was getting seriously yeah. I mean, the foul, the foul ball was ridiculous, though, that was called. Oh, that was yeah. okay. <laughs> Let's yeah, well. not go about that. I'm going to bring it all back. Um, <laughs> and the field sort of ran out of luck in the end of the yeah. season with, we had so many players who, when players went down, players would come up, but so many players then start not hitting form. And the players who were coming up and were providing production, had sort of been worked out by pitches as well. And it was, we, we were stuck. Yeah, it just seemed like we were stuck. everyone went cold at the same time. It was either yeah. the whole team was good or the whole team was, was pretty poor, other than like Harper and, and Nick at the end of the season. Yeah. And, and Casty, and I I can see Casty perhaps moving on. I can see the Phils perhaps moving on from Casty. Now, I think the reasons why is I don't think we'll get the same production out of Casty that what we had last year. I think that was a great year, great second half of the season from Castellanos. But I just feel again the Phils may feel there's there's better there's better upgrades out there at possibly yeah. the same price or a little bit more. But I think the Phils would pay it. I also think Casti's trade value is probably the highest it's it's going to be. Where we'll, we'll yeah. like get from with the good second half of the season he had, it would be a good trade bait. I wonder. I I think the fills are open, like you said, to so many players in this off season. Yeah, I've, got, I've, I've remembered my curveball actually. Oh, go on, Teoscar Hernandez. Okay, I'm a, I, 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 I would like that. Like, I think he could he could do a job out of left field. Yeah, abso he's, absolutely. Obviously, he's not. He's you know he's 32, so he's not young, but he's not. You know, we've got we've got quite a young team anyway, so. I would, I would have, as I've said, I'm over Austin Hayes. Austin Hayes really didn't give us the production. Uh, I would yeah, like to Austin Hayes. really gave us any production. <laughs> no, no, that, that just didn't work. I know, I know, I know injuries, yeah. injuries didn't help him, but as Spencer said earlier, some of our deals have just not worked out. Whit Merrifield just didn't work out. No. Tyron Walker's not worked Until out. Until he left and then... And then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he got hit in the head and he's gone back to being... Yeah. Again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but we got that home run out of him in London, yeah. which uh, which did many strange things. With David Dow, Whit Merrifield, <laughs> went yard. Tyre Walker pitched a game of his life. Uh, I think Walker comes back, and I think Walker comes back in the number five. I don't think we can, they can't really afford to get rid of him, can't just the, the but contract. They can't. And, and even now, they're investing a lot into him. They've given him this big off-season training program for him to sort himself out. They're literally giving him no rest. They, yeah. it, it looks like quite an intensive program. 
And I think all we want out of Walker as a fifth starter is four or five innings, five preferably, six bonus, and four four runs, five yeah. at most. And for a fifth starter, that's fine. The only problem is the offense always turns to jelly. When yeah, it always seems. Yeah, down. they they would perform when they didn't necessarily need. You know, on a on a on a Wheeler game, the, you know, they they would decide right, we can score seven eight runs today. And Wheeler's obviously not going to give up anything. And then Walker would come in and say, "Oh, we can't we can't hit it all day." It, it it's exactly it feels exactly like that, and it feels like. I suppose with Wheeler, they know that once they take a small lead or once they can do what they can, that's that's. I mean, with Wheeler, you can pretty much get one run, yeah. and you, you can be pretty confident. It just felt like when 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 Ty Young came in, that the players were like, oh, "Whatever we do doesn't matter anyway," because yeah. Walker's going to blow it. And it's it's a mental thing, and it works both sides. And and it was just a horrible cycle, yeah. of, of of that which got worse and worse. Walker got got down and deflated because he knew that. He, he knows. He knows the pressure's on him. He knows the fans are going to turn on him after an inning if it's bad. He knows the players behind him are just getting deflated with his performances. Um, I think Walk. I think Walk comes back. They'll give him a good shot in spring. They're not going to rush Painter back just yet. I think even if Painter, who's like who's having a good Arizona Fall League, yeah. no doubt about it, uh, a good spring would be great. But I still think they're going to limit his innings. Yeah, I think we're probably more looking towards like the second half of the season for e exactly. Absolutely. And that's when we really need, you know, to have Painter if he's still carrying on his projections of, of being the pitcher yeah. we know he could be. And the way he's going at the moment, if he gets better and better, we can get more innings out of him. What a player to bring in in the second half yeah. of the season. That that could be crucial. And some good young prospects like Painter and obviously uh, Miller as well is looking really Yeah, Aiden really Miller. Good. Otto Kemp's doing a great job uh, in Arizona. In fact, Phillies Talgate again uh, posted some nice little uh, Arizona full Stats from our Phillies players out there. Uh, obviously, one that catches the mind, uh, UK's Gabriel Rincones. Uh, he's 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 doing okay. His, his average is pretty low, two two zero. However, his OPS isn't too bad, three point nine zero. Two home runs, thirteen hits, eight RBIs, ten walks, only six strikeouts. Uh, but Dave Dombrowski, even just talking about Rincones in the off season and the plans they have for him in spring, and and potentially, and they've talked about it as well. He said it, you know, if Rincon performs, if he has a good spring, he may get a shot. He may get a shot at the Major League roster and his shot in the outfield. Crawford may get the same as well. Uh, they may well sway towards the young guys to bring him up and give him a chance first before they make that big trade. Um, the one that does catch the eye is, uh, is definitely Otto Kemp. Uh, 45 at-bats, uh, averaging uh, 0.89. 13 hits, six home runs, 22 RBIs, 11 walks. Otto Kemp proving that, yeah, he's he's certainly, certainly what so yeah. far, I know it's the Arizona Fall League, but he's already giving us production down there, looking like the player that we're hoping he can be. Uh, Pitching-wise, has been really good for the Phillies. Andrew Painter so far, 13 innings, uh, eight hits, there's three earned runs allowed, two walks, 10 strikeouts, a 2.08 ERA, which, just coming back from Tommy yeah. John, coming out of the cold. That's excellent. Excellent for Andrew Pazer. Looking really good. Uh, Griff McGarry as well. He's yeah, 3.10 ERA in 8.2 innings. Not too bad. Um, well, to be honest, Painter's a standout. <laughs> Painter's <laughs> a standout of all those. Uh, McGowan is not quite having the full league he would have hoped for. But hey, look, it's just keeping these guys loose, keeping these guys playing. Uh, Johan Rojas is going to be playing in, I think, is, is it Dominican Republic League. I, yeah, I, something I, like. I saw today he's getting the at bats in, which is good. Which is good. It's nothing strenuous, but just keeps him keeps him in the motion and yeah. get him practicing. So what What are your thoughts? You know, we we you say like Tywin Walker's got this big off season program. We come back in, and he's the same as he was at the end of last year. What What's What's our solution then at, at the fifth picture? Because like you say, we don't want to rush Painter in. What's, we what, don't want to rush Painter, but we in. can't just do the merry go round of of what we attempted, which also didn't work. No, no, it didn't. It, it really didn't. You know, they came in and gave, you know, the odd good game. Um, you know, the, the stories were, were, again, fantastic. But it's a good point. What do the Phillies do? Because at the end of the season, it didn't really matter because we knew we were, you know, we were, we were pretty much locked in for the playoffs. So having, you know, basically a, a one loss every, at least one loss every five was kind of, and, it doesn't and, matter at this point, but it's yeah. not a way to start a season. It, it's not. And then this is the sort of 
situation the Phillies have because if they're going to make a move, they're going to make it early. You can't wait till once the season starts, the pitchers are already locked in. Yeah. Unless there are some free agent pitchers that haven't been signed up yet, Justin Verlander could be an option, um, a cheap option perhaps. They would they would have to look. They'd have to make the call early because the free agents pitchers will get one. They need to be signed early because they do need the pitchers more than anyone need the spring training behind them. Yeah. So you've got to make that call early. Otherwise, they're going to have to trade because you can't. Yeah. If it's the same as last year, and you're losing every one in every five games at least with Walker on the mound and the offense just going, now nah, we're not playing with this guy. It's just pointless. It's it's a it's bad. It's bad for the locker room. It, it's bad all round, you know. And the fact you're going to tell about your fans, you know, the, the fans if they know Walker's pitching, like ah, you know, it's a game they're going to avoid. Yeah. Um, I'd like to think the Phils. I, I still I think the Phils still make a move as a potential backup. Maybe Turnbull comes back, and they they're getting back on a cheap one year option and put him maybe as a long reliever in the bullpen, but then yeah. someone they can bring in Tanner Banks, Seth Johnson, uh, maybe an option as well. You know, we need to get some value out of him. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned rumours of, of Hoffman potentially moving to a start somewhere. Is it, that yeah, yes, something you think we could try? Jeff Hoffman would be, because let's be honest, the fifth starter just needs to go four or five innings, you yeah. know, or, or a pitch limit, probably of 70, 80, but that's probably with the fifth start going to give you four or five. Uh, I don't like what the Dodgers do and the, the Rays do with this. Well, the, the Dodgers are saying they're going to run six this year. Yeah. Well, if they have six pitchers fit and available, the Dodgers oh, yeah, have a horrible, yeah. they've got a horrible yeah. history record. <laughs> I know the World Series champions, which amazing how they pulled it off because they have a rotten record with, with pitchers going down unhealthy, which actually kind of makes it even more remarkable that just shows that if you can hit small ball and do the basics right, that, that's I'd all just you need. I'd love to see some small ball next year. Yeah, yeah, our small, yeah, we need, that's something we do need. And yeah. I know it's not the prettiest of baseball, but come on, let's have some small ball. Let, let's drive home runs. Let's get some bloops and some into the outfield yeah. and let's, let's get some bunt. And it'd be nice to see Schwab hit a home run with runners on. It, it really <laughs> would. And, and that's a good, another point. I think, I do think they move Schwaber off the leadoff. Yeah, I would, I, I, I had that written down as a note. Like, uh, I'd, I'd like to see them try Turner again. At I, I, I would. I, I think it works. I, it, it, it's, just a, it's just a shame that Rojas isn't more of a contact hitter because to have, yeah. him, lead, have him leading off with his speed and then Turner coming in I mean, behind. Turner's quick as well. Yeah, exactly. Obviously not, not as quick, but. Not as quick, but you saw actually Rojas did get on base a couple of times in the postseason and then Turner sort of followed by. You did have situations at times when um, Rojas and Turner were on base and speed kills. It puts the yeah. pitchers off their timings, off their rhythm. It, you know, they, they make the defense makes more mistakes because they're going to make their plays quick. You need you need that speed. Bryson stops pretty quick. You know, yeah. need... I, remember, I can't remember which game it was. Um, we went to extra innings. It was Cal Schwarber that was out there. Uh, as the ghost runner, I think, and I remember like trying to watch him run it. I think he, we did actually win that game, but uh, I can't remember who was in. It was fairly late in the season, but Schwaber was our guy out there, and you could see him trying to sprint. It was it, it was painful. It, <laughs> it's 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 like a it's like a big freight train, yeah, <laughs> moving slow motion towards you. Love Kyle. Oh um, yeah, great guy, and like obviously is you know the amount of home runs he was hitting, but they're all for one run, which is kind of for, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Let's and get it, someone on or two people on, and then and then. Let him get the home run. I, I think that's important. I, I that's another reason why I think he needs to go lower down because he needs to be hitting those home runs with a chance of runners in in, yeah. in on base. So you know, we especially the way we're struggling for runs late on in the season. Uh, Bryson Stott, it'd be really good if he can turn it around next year. I don't think he's going to have as bad a year with the bat as he had last year. I, yeah. I really just like to think that's a an anomaly down year for Bryson. Um, again, it just needs to hit for contact. Same as Boma. You know, Boma has started just getting all funky. Maybe, I think it was his injury. Um, we'd also like to see more home runs out of Alec, but, you know, he was pushing on for 100 RBIs yeah. before the injury derailed him completely. Um, but I, I hope, I hope the Phil's give him a second. Uh, well, not a second. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see a chance to, to, to come back and, you know, give us that 100 RBIs, which becomes so important and, and be clutch. We've run us in scoring position, but the the Alec Bregman rumors aren't going away. Yeah. And and I, I think if the Phils had the chance to get Bregman in for Bone, I think they're going to take it. 
Um, but it's, it's, it's interesting. As, as Ben said earlier, it, it's hot stove season. A lot of rumors flying out. A lot of wild rumors. The agents trying to drive up the, 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 yeah. the prices, the values of these players. Uh, so it's a fun time. You know, it's a fun time. It's just your first off season in, in baseball yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. It's it can be wild. It can you can get deals out of nowhere, which which break and it's uh, it's well it's, once January rolls around, it's uh, it's the build up to spring training. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And like the difference in like obviously the contract lengths. I know obviously like baseball careers are a lot longer, but you know you you signing players in the NFL in in the off season to like three four year contracts and then. I sort of got into baseball, and it's oh, he's time for like ten years, thirteen years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, half a, you know, and, and you know what? Whatever contract Soto signs, the crazy thing is, and it's going to be probably a possible record breaker. Yeah, the crazy thing is, in two years' time, it will probably be the seventh, eighth, yeah, you know, highest contract. You know, Bryce Harper's still chasing a renewal when he signed. It was again one of the biggest ever contracts, and now I, I don't think it's, I, I think it's nine. It might not even be top ten anymore. Yeah. Uh, which is crazy, you know. It's amazing the the time, you know, the time these contracts just get bigger and bigger and crazier and crazier. And then you yeah, know, someone always wants to be the next highest paid, don't they? So that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And Atani comes along and obliterates it all. And Dodgers got got funky with his contract. Yeah, yeah. It, it's you never know. I think, he, I think he showed he was worth it. I know he what? didn't. His like World Series, he wasn't as impactful, but he'd like. But, but the year, like yeah, uh, Atani got them there. Atani yeah. got them there. And Freeman and, and Freddie Freeman again, another player who I love outside. Oh yeah, of these. incredible. Uh, you know, incredible. it was a it was the lesser of two evils between yeah, exactly yeah. between Dodgers and Yankees. But I'm, I'm not a big fan of the Dodgers fan base at all. But no. as a team, you know, there's guys in that team that you know I quite like Mookie Betts. I quite like Freddie. Yeah, yeah. There's some like like, 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 like you look at like the Braves and the Mets, and it's like. There's not yeah. many. Not, yeah, there's not well, many. Like, it's it's an interesting two rivalries the Braves met. Like the Mets, I don't like their team at all. I don't like anyone on that team. Uh, the fan base annoy me. Um, I, it's the OMG sign that. Yeah, the whole ah, oh, the grimace thing. So much. The yeah. OMG, it's just got annoying. It got really annoying. Uh, I think I do think the trumpets for Edwin Diaz is pretty cool, but yeah. unfortunately for them, Diaz is not it's not yeah. the closer to justify it. It's like us having uh, Welcome to the Jungle for um uh for, oh my god, I can't remember his name, which is probably a good thing. Uh Kimbrel. <laughs> yeah. Uh you know, he came out in the postseason to Welcome to the Jungle, the big build up, and it was just a disaster. You know, he didn't warrant it at all. No. Um, I actually think you're putting more pressure on the pitches when they walk out <laughs> to a big a big entrance like that. Diaz was never the same after the, the, they put the trumpets in for him. Uh, his injury didn't help him either. Yeah. Uh, but whereas the Braves, I, I find that more of a grittier rivalry uh, because of how good also the Braves are. Uh, they got the battle of the mascots. You know, bloopers always giving it on yeah. the, on on social media. The Braves fans are just oh, they really annoy <laughs> me as well. The team is ridiculously good. Yeah. It's funny because there's that respect between us and the Braves as well. Like we know you're good, but lots of really like punchable faces. Here. What's that? Lots of punchable faces. A lot, a lot, and the Mets have those as well. And, and, and Brandon Nimmo running every time on a walk just is it trigger? Yeah. It does trigger me. It, it triggers me. I hate it. To be honest, um, I hate the Soto shuffle. But do you know what? If he comes to, to the <laughs> yeah, does it, I, I'll, I'll embrace it. If he <laughs> comes, I will change to my tune. <laughs> yeah, I will, absolutely, um, Richard. It was an absolute pleasure to have you on, mate. Yeah, thank you very much. Have you enjoyed that? For, for, I think so. It made be half hour. We've gone on for 15 <laughs> minutes. It always happens. It always happens. Um, we'll be back soon, guys. Probably in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we've got a Christmas special coming up with the big end of season quiz. Like we had last year, it went down a storm last year. Uh, so we're going to bring it again. We're going to bring back John Foley at, at 2008 Phil's. Spencer will be back. We'll get Richard back as well. And we'll try and get someone like James Seltzer, Jack Fritz. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll try and bring someone else in because uh, the, the quiz was fun last year. It was a lot of preparation. Uh, turned into a shambles towards the end. But you guys seem to love it and enjoy it and find it funny. So we'll bring that back as well. And we'll have news on the brand new uh, PSI, Philly Sports International. We'll get Liam on to talk about that with us as well. Very, very exciting plans ahead. Uh, but that's a wrap. That's a wrap for now. We will see you guys in a couple of weeks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And we'll see you again soon. Uh, good night.